All right, let's assume that you haven't used Unreal before. First thing you're going to need is the Epic Launcher. This is very similar to the Unity Hub or whatever if you've um, used other game engines. But basically, you're going to download the Epic Launcher. And if you've never signed in, you'll probably have to create an account with Epic. You can choose to tie in some other account if you want, but I would keep it simple and uh, make it straight for Epic. Once you make your account, your screen's probably going to look a little bit different. I'm going to sign in with Epic and I'm going to put my sign in here. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to put that on camera, so I'll skip ahead once I sign in. All right, then you're going to be inside the Epic Launcher. I'm going to maximize this just to minimize distractions here. You're going to see some tabs. These tabs may change over time. Versions of the engine introduce cool new features. But basically, the main things you need to know about, you're probably going to see a store tab where if you decide to take a break from game development, you can play some games, you can purchase some stuff if you want. We're really not going to mess with this too much. The other things you'll see is the library tab. The library tab will show you all of your store purchases. Again, we're not going to mess with this. The main tab that we're worried about is the Unreal Engine tab. If you click on that, it's going to bring you to this larger uh, setup right here. With the Unreal Engine tab selected, you're going to see a series of other tabs that are all related to Unreal Engine development. So first, you're going to see some news. I do think it's worth just periodically browsing through the news here and making sure that, you know, if you're a sound designer, if there are any cool sound features that are introduced or uh, if you're a programmer or whatever, like just see the new tech that's coming out. Um, only click on it if it's interesting to you. But news is important. You should look through that occasionally. The other thing you're going to see is the samples tab or just it may be called something similar, but basically some example projects that you can download and look into if you want to see the current new features of Unreal or if you want to see some specific examples. So, for example, a turn based Unreal project or something. Uh, I think it's using C++ and it's older. But um, down at the bottom, we could see like, uh, where is it? Somewhere around here. Oh, yes. Turn based strategy. You can see some other things like UI setups, platformer games, whatever. You can see a lot of examples in the samples tab. This may be called something different in the future. Use your best judgment. The Lyra starter game is another interesting one to look at, at least as of now when I'm recording this. Uh, you're probably going to see, see some other really cool stuff. So that's what the samples tab is. Downloadable projects that you can poke through. The other thing you're going to see is the marketplace, which maybe I'll get to later. But uh, the marketplace is pretty handy if you want to either download some functionality or some art assets or any kind of game assets that you want to use for uh, your projects. Largely, what I'm going to be teaching is not going to be using the marketplace because I, I want to show you how to build this stuff from the ground up. But if you are actually making a game, especially if you're making a game by yourself, you're probably going to want to grab some stuff from the marketplace because it just takes way too much time to make all this stuff yourself. Uh, twin motion tab, I you know, I don't know. Maybe this will disappear in the future, maybe not. But if, it, if you want to know more about it, you can click that. But the main ones that we're concerned about is the library tab. The library tab is going to house all of your current engine versions and all of, it, all of your current projects. So this is going to be ver very relevant to what we're working on. So I think the news tab, the samples tab, and the library tab are the big ones. And then marketplace if you want to find some new stuff. And then anything else, if you know, in the future, whenever you're watching this, maybe there's some other cool stuff that gets released here. But um, the library tab is where you're going to go to launch the editor and to choose what version you want to use and find your old projects. On the library tab, you're going to see all your current engine versions. If you want to add a new version, you can either install a version that you don't have over here. Uh, you can hit the plus button to install something new. Or if you see it down here, if a recommended version of the tab, you can install it here as well. You can see that I'm working off 5.0.3. It's very likely there's going to be a newer version by the time that you're watching this. So you can always um, add a new one. So the engine versions are at the top. Your projects that you have started on this machine are going to be right below that. And you can see some previous experiments and things that I've started on, on this uh, Windows install. So if you wanted to open any of these projects, you could you know double click it if you had previous ones started. And then down below that, you're going to see the vault. These are all the things that you have downloaded or associated from the marketplace with your account. So you can see a lot of old sample projects and whatnot. You don't need to worry about this yet. The big one is the project. So if we want to start a new project, all we have to do is at the very top right, hopefully by the time you're seeing this, they haven't changed it too drastically. You're going to click the drop down button 
choose a version. I'm going to choose 5.0.3 since we're going to start working with Unreal 5. Choose that button and then hit launch. It's going to load and it's going to do some stuff as it opens up this little Unreal Project browser. And then once we're inside this Unreal Project browser, it tries to direct us on where we want to go from here. You know, on these tutorials, we're going to gear it towards games. So I'm going to click the games tab. And you're also going to see some template starting projects. Now, in most cases, you're probably fine with either the first person, the third person, or the top down. If you specifically want to make a vehicle game, sure, you can use that as a starting point. Or if you're interested in AR or VR, like whatever. This is going to change over time. They're going to put out new templates, I'm sure. You can always start from blank if you want, but you would choose one of these and then you choose to create if you wanted to start. You know, if you're not even sure where to start or you just know that you want a very specific game type, you would choose blank. For me, for this first project, uh, I'm going to choose third person because I think if I'm not doing a first person, third person will give us the most flexibility for our starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and choose blueprint because I know for now I'm going to stick with blueprint. So I'm going to choose third person and I'm going to choose blueprint. I'm going to keep all this stuff off except for starter content. I am going to check because that's going to be very useful for prototyping. So uh, once I choose my project location, which for me, I like to just make a folder on my desktop and on, my, on that folder on my desktop, I'll call it projects. And inside that projects, I'll have Unreal. And inside of here, this is where I want to save my projects. So give it a name once you choose your location. Uh, let's call this side scroller example or whatever, and then hit create. You may get some warnings uh, letting you know that you need to update your graphics drivers. Um, I'm going to click OK, but if you get anything, it, just resolve them however it makes sense for your machine. And then this part, it, it could honestly take a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. If this takes a little bit, that is totally normal. So. Just don't be alarmed by that. And then at some point you should be inside of the Unreal Engine and you should see the viewport and everything. And at this point you're ready to actually start developing and customizing your project.